Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I'm doing this video from the floor of my basement because I have a confession to make and it's more serious if it's on the floor. At least that's what indie movies told me. I love strippers. Oh. I just can't get enough of strippers. <sighs> I mean, I like this kind of stripper. I like this kind of stripper. I like this kind, that kind, and even this kind of stripper. Well, actually, I don't really like this kind of stripper. This is the one that works the worst for me, but I bought it because it seemed cool, and I like Irwin tools, vice grip tools, whatever the hell this is, and so I figured I'd give it a shot. And then I was even more intrigued when for significantly less money, I found this on Banggood. Ooh, similar. Without having access to this tool, I thought it looked exactly the same. It turns out here in person, there are some differences. Like, these handles are just a bit more contoured. Let me get these other tools out of the way. Eh. These handles are a bit more contoured and tapered than these. This metal just looks like lower quality than this metal. Weight-wise, though, they're about the same, so I'm assuming they're made out of the same things, probably steel. And this has yellow plastic around the back with metal around the outside, whereas this just has black plastic around the whereas this has black plastic on the back with no metal along the outside. So while this is certainly a copy of this, it's not an exact clone. I thought maybe I got lucky and this was gonna be an exact clone of this to the point where maybe they even came from the same factory. But even these screws are different. There's a lot of small, very subtle differences here. So how well do they work in general? And so on this 12 gauge solid core wire, how well do these work? Well, reasonably well, actually. And in fact, you can get pretty reliable stripping with this. It has a nice gauge, so you're always consistent on your depth, even though you can eyeball it pretty well. And it has adjustable tension on the sheathing so that smaller and larger wires can theoretically be stripped easily. Okay, right away, one oddity about these cheapo strippers is that the wire doesn't actually line up with the wire stop. It kind of just glides right over it. Whereas on these, it lines up quite perfectly. See? Nice. But how does it strip? That's the real question. Oh. Ah, it does it, but it kind of mangled the wire a little more. Ooh, actually it didn't, it didn't even get through the entire insulation. Not so great to knock off strippers. There we go. Eh. No, no. No, really, now with this too much tension, it's sort of just mangling the uh, insulation. Okay, so not impressed. I mean, like I said, these don't work terribly well in general, but these uh, are even worse. You might ask, but Scott, what about on, oh, what the hell is this? How is this not marked with the, it just has 100 feet of speaker wire. I'm pretty sure it's 14 gauge by the looks of it, but it could be that it's supposed to be 12 and it's a thin 12. Anyway. Vice grips, nice. Okay, that one didn't do too badly either, although I had it set to be a little deeper and it slid a bit before it actually pulled off. Yeah, no, it's not really gripping. It should have been more analogous. It should have been more analogous to this one because I had the depth gauges set about the same. What about this really old Radio Shack alarm wire, which is 22 gauge, stranded? Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, oh, took out a couple of strands. Yeah. Let's give it one more shot with this wire. Maybe that was just a fluke. Nope. But so far these are more finicky because I haven't had to adjust the tension on these and they've been handling it okay. In fact, I thought one of the benefits of this design, no, that's still ripped apart some strands. In fact, I thought the benefit of this design was that it was sort of self-adjusting to a point anyway. Let's first see if it does the outer sheath. Much cleaner. And obviously that sheath is much thicker, or at least the entire diameter of it is much thicker. And so these self-adjusted just fine. And this is real thin, finicky wire, and it's not even completely straight, which can sometimes muck these up a little bit. Looks like that chopped it a little bit. That's not cool. Let me give it one more try. Oh, that just completely severed it. Like I said, self-adjusting to a point. Now to adjust the tension, you just turn this knob clockwise for more K 
counterclockwise for less and that adjusts the amount of tension between the teeth here and here that grip the insulation. And, ah, what do you know? Okay, nice result with that. So it just required a little tension adjustment, logically enough. How about the knockoffs? Oh. Well, kind of did it. I mean, all right. Um, all right, that did pretty well, but now this side was gripping too hard, so it was actually pulling the entire wire through. So you'd think I'd have to increase the tension now on this side in order to compensate, but I have a feeling that might just end up pulling the wire in tween. No, it actually kind of worked. So score one for these guys. A little bit better with the thinner gauge wire. And as far as like smoothness of action and the feel of it, I mean, you know, you can kind of feel the quality of a tool as you work it. This definitely has a bit more of a quality feel because this one feels just a bit looser. It's hard to explain. It's one of those things unless you get your hands on it. Also, the spring tension on this one that holds the uh, handles apart, it's a lot harder to squeeze. I mean, I'm not saying it's hard to squeeze, but harder than this one. So, I mean, if you were doing a whole mess of strippings, oh. like if you had a whole bunch of conductors to strip, these would actually be harder to use, a little harder on the hands than these. And that's not adjustable. I mean, you could replace the spring, sure. What are the chances you have just the right spring laying around? I guess if you're watching a video like this, the chances are kind of higher than average, but you know what I mean. Now, my go-to strippers for many years were these because they work great on pretty much any gauge of wire, strips it right off, no muss, no fuss. Now, I have, these are adjustable where you can move this screw up and down in order to adjust how close together these blades go, but I have them just about as tight as they can get without severing even the thinnest of wire that I work with. However, that's not to say you can't just grab onto a larger wire and strip it as well. The only time it becomes a little risky is when you're using stranded wire. If you're a little too aggressive, you might pull out one of the strands, but ah, there you go. That one came off just fine though. And these are also good because they're very small. Now the one thing I don't like about these, and you can get these in other forms, these are not spring loaded, so you kind of have to grip it like this in order to pull and push it like, like so. Lately I've sort of moved over to these. I, I always felt like these were kind of cheating because they have all the holes for different sized wire gauges. But you know what, when you just bang out one after another, this does make for a neater and a bit easier job. These are a little lighter, even though they're bigger than these. Nicer grip, of course. And uh, these were real cheap on Amazon, by the way. They're a CHP brand. I don't think that stands for California Highway Patrol. And they're more analogous to these. Like I said, I've been using these a lot for electrical work. You can see how dirty they are, kind of all messed up. But they do work pretty well, and they're very durable. Oh, the other thing I wanted to try was coax, because Coax can be a bitch to strip, depending on the tools you have. Now, you could do it with these pretty easily. Like, that came off without damaging any of the shielding. These are, like I said, these are great to have. These are a great standby, go-to one, pretty much universal. These types of strippers with the gauge notches are not as good for coax because they'll generally just chew into it. I mean, you can do it in a pinch. Now, this one is very good to have in your toolkit. Very cheap as well. I'm sure you can guess that. Um, you put the wire inside, spin around a couple of times, these blades just cut through the sheathing. So let's see how these guys fare with the sheathing on coax. Uh, not as bad as I thought, but it kind of gripped it here and actually damaged the sheathing right about there. And yet it only stripped from there onwards. So not, not a fantastic result there. This is about the largest diameter of cable that you could fit in these actually. It's just squeezing in there. Okay, about the same result. Uh, didn't damage the sheathing as much down low, but didn't strip as much as the depth gauge said it should. All right, so needless to say, these are not good for coax. Again, if you're wondering what kind of wire strippers to buy and you can only buy one in the entire world, I would buy a pair like this. I would get one that's spring-loaded, of course, but very cheap, pretty much universal. You can strip almost any kind of wire with this uh, with just minimal practice, just with a light touch. I would stay away from the knockoffs if you're set on a pair like this. I would get out of these two, the brand name Vice Grips. There may be other alternatives. I'm not sure if these are patented and these are actually a real you know, knockoff knockoff. For electrical work, I really like these. Um, Lyman's pliers, sure they work, but especially if you don't strip 100,000 cables a year, these are just a lot more reliable than uh, Lyman's pliers. 
For smaller gauge wires, like I said, I do like these. Good quality for not much money. And for coax, one of these. You don't have to go too fancy if you're a do-it-yourselfer and just doing some cable work around the house. Um, this is by no means a professional tool, but more than effective. And I'm pretty sure I have some other styles of wire strippers around here somewhere. My basement is full of crap. The reason I'm on the floor right now is not actually because I have a confession to make or because I'm some kind of softy. It's because my basement is a mess and in complete disarray right now because I'm completely rearranging it. Did I say completely enough? I don't know, I completely did not. So anyway, thanks for watching my ramblings about some wire strippers. Um, stay away from the knockoffs. Actually stay away from this style completely. Hey, uh, you're such a phony. I hate you, go away. No, you go away, this is my house. Ha 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 ha. Ah, fuck you guys too.